Vecchia from the Children's Aquarium here at Fair Park. And today we're going to talk about another one of our reptilian friends. Uh, what we're going to talk about today are caiman lizards. Now this is not a crocodilian, it is actually a lizard. The reason why they're called caiman lizards is if you look along their skin, their skin is very hard and it almost resembles a crocodilian, like a caiman lizard. Uh, so that's where they get their name from. So we kind of wanted to show you uh, their enclosure to give you an idea of how well we take care of our animals here. Uh, I'm in the enclosure right now, and as you can see, it's pretty much almost all aquatic and semi-aquatic, and that's because this particular species is semi-aquatic. They come from the, Am from the Amazon, specifically uh, along Brazil and Ecuador and that area, and in that area they like to hang out over logs, like this one is doing here. And what they do is in the event a predator comes close by, they can immediately jump in the water and swim away. So it's actually really awesome for them to do that. They also like to perch and heat themselves up along these logs as well. So these are really cool species that we have here. We have three. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna feed them for you because one of the really awesome things about this species is how well they're adapted at eating a particular food item. And that food item is snails. So what we're gonna show you is our lizard cut chewing on a snail, and then hopefully you'll be able to hear the crack of the snail. And then what they do is they chew it up, spit out the shell, and then consume the inside, the meaty portion of the snail itself. A couple other topics to show you in this enclosure here. Basically they come from the rainforest, and so we have big plants in here to provide them with shelter. We have substrate here in the event that they want to dig or if the females need to lay eggs. Um, it's also fairly humid in here and warm because they like that type of temperature, again, because they're reptiles. And then, of course, we provide them with a very large body of water so that they can, they can swim and exhibit natural behavior. Another cool part is because they're a reptile, many reptiles require natural sun. Uh, obviously, in an enclosed environment like this, we can't really provide them access to the sun itself. But we do the next best thing, and if you look at these lights here, these lights are specifically designed to um, emit UVB radiation, which is basically sunlight. Um, we have meters to specifically test that, um, and basically it allows our reptiles to maintain their calcium levels just like a human would. So there you can see one swimming, and you can see his tail, um, how he propels himself along the water. So basically they swim not all that dissimilarly from a crocodilian. Another really distinctive feature about this species is their bright orange head. There's some studies that suggest that it may be due to breeding, that female males may, uh, with a brighter head, might be more attractive to females. And there you have a real good look at their scalation. And that's kind of where they get their name from uh, with the caiman lizard. Um, however, one of the threats to this species is they are prone to being consumed by the locals. Um, local tribes and whatnot consume them. Um, and they're also harvested for the leather trade. Um, currently, the IUCN um, lists this species as not threatened, but their, their population is unknown because there isn't a lot of data on these species, which, isn't, which is pretty common for a lot of reptiles, just there isn't a ton of research being done. So it's hard to determine exactly how well they're doing in the wild. Okay guys, so what we're seeing here is he's gonna start chewing that snail. So what he's doing is he's currently chewing his food, crushing the snail, and then trying to spit out the, the, the hard part of the, of the shell. They do occasionally eat part of the shell, which is actually not bad for them because they have to make it out here. And then hopefully you can get a real good look you can kind of see bits and pieces of their teeth. Their teeth are, are blunted, 
and they have incredibly strong jaws in order to do what they're doing right now. You can kind of see, there's a teeth right there. You can see two of them right there. And that's what they use to crush these, these uh, food items. So they don't particularly have sharp teeth. They're spe specifically adapted to do what he's doing, and that's consuming snails. There you go. So you can get a good snap. And you can kind of see he's spitting out the good most of the shell, which kind of makes their enclosure a little dirty, but it's still, we don't mind cleaning it up. And there you go, it's making a mess. So another really interesting adaptation that these lizards have is they have such a really long tail that they use to split, swim with. But when you keep them in a, in a zoological institution or when they're attacked by a predator, if they're too rough on them, they can freak out um, and get scared. And they actually have been known to drop their tail like you might see a gecko do. Um, they probably drop it right about here. But unlike a gecko, it's my understanding that the tail won't grow back. Um, and you'll just have a nub. Um, so as you can see, they have their full tail, so you can tell that we're, we're pretty good with them. And we do a good job handling them whenever we need to by making sure to be as gentle as possible. Plus, they're also pretty habituated to us and used to us coming in and out of their enclosure. And honestly, the dropping of the tail is probably a last resort. Uh, more often than not, in, a, in the wild, they're just going to jump in the water and swim away. But as you can see, you can see how long this tail is. This caiman lizard is exhibiting a very common behavior that he is basking. Uh, right above him, which we'll show you here in a minute, is his heat lamp. And so here he is thermoregulating his temperature because as we all should know, reptiles are ectothermic, which means that they have to regulate their temperature externally. So that's why they sit out and they bask. You'll also notice that there are fish in this enclosure as well. Um, that's because we like to have multi-species exhibits sometimes, and since this enclosure is semi-aquatic, which is an ideal enclosure and habitat for our caiman lizards, the cichlids that are in here are called Rio Grande cichlids, and they are the only cichlid that is found north of Mexico. Um, and they're actually found here in Texas, specifically along and in the Rio Grande, which is, you can see obviously from Big Ben. Um, so they do really well in this enclosure. They're a highly adaptable species. Um, unfortunately, we can't see any, but sometimes you'll see little babies in here uh, where mom and dad will protect them from the other fish as they grow. All right, everybody. So what you just saw is our awesome caiman lizard. We want to thank everybody for tuning in, and we appreciate everyone's support of the Children's Aquarium of Fair Park as well as the Dallas Zoo. We want to say goodbye. Hope you have a wonderful weekend. Stay safe, maintain social distance, and take care of yourselves. Have a great day.